Hey everyone, welcome to my channel and welcome back to my subscribers. Something you don't know about me is that one of my best friends owns a few pawn shops and deals with jewelry stores on a regular basis. And I am taking the knowledge that I got from him to make sure you don't get ripped off when buying or selling gold jewelry. Because as we approach the holiday season, some of us may consider selling some gold to raise cash and others will be looking to buy gold jewelry for their loved ones. And in this video, I will be showing you the following things to make sure you are protected. Starting with how to identify the purity of your jewelry. So how much gold is actually contained in the jewelry you have. Number two, how to accurately weigh your jewelry. It's very simple and I will show you how. Number three, how to determine the price of gold in grams. And this will be very important because all of this leads to point number four, because I am going to show you how to determine the fair price for your gold jewelry, including jeweler markup for those of you who are going to jewelry stores to purchase gold as a gift for somebody this holiday season. As always, I'm just going to ask you to leave a like if you think this content is good and you think it should be seen by more people. You never know, that like just may save somebody a few dollars this holiday season. So let's get into it because the fact is that most people have no clue how much the gold they are wearing or the gold they want to wear is actually worth. Jewelers and pawn shops have been playing people for fools for years now and it all starts with understanding the purity of either what you have or what you're buying. So to help you understand that, I've put together this table that shows the typical composition of yellow gold jewelry at different carat levels. Now, what is important to note here is the percentage of gold because that is what determines the value of the jewelry, not the additional metals in it. So I have made that larger and bold here on the chart for you to see. And whether you have yellow gold, white gold, or rose gold, the percentage of gold contained in it is determined by the carotage of the gold with 24 carats representing pure gold. So if, for example, you have some 18 carat white gold, it will be 75% pure gold, just like is shown here on this chart, just like for yellow gold and for rose gold. Okay, it doesn't make a difference. As a side note, if you are dealing with white gold, you won't find anything above 20 carat because to get the white effect, it has to be mixed with silver or palladium, sometimes even platinum. And for rose gold, you won't find anything higher than 22 carat because to achieve the color, jewelers mix it with copper. So don't get fooled by people trying to sell 24 carat white or rose gold it doesn't exist because gold is yellow. But back to the table, historically it's important to mention that there are some unique purity levels that have been used in history for gold jewelry. So if you have an antique piece that is for example 15 karat gold, don't worry because no matter what level you have, it's easy to calculate the purity of gold. Because whatever carriage your gold is, you can divide that number by 24 to determine its purity. So using that 15 carat example, you just grab your calculator and you put in 15 divided by 24. That will give you 0.625. And then you multiply that number by 100. So in this case, you get 62.5% and that is the purity of gold in your jewelry, meaning that 62.5% of the metal used to make that jewelry is gold. Now, for many people out there, specifically in Europe and Asia, your marks indicating the purity of gold will be slightly different. 
using three digit numbers like the ones shown in the table here. And I've highlighted them in a red box with the title Hallmark. And these numbers indicate the purity in parts per 1000 versus the parts per 24 system that the Keratage system uses. And it is very easy to calculate the purity of your gold using these numbers because all you have to do is divide the number by 10 to get the purity of your gold in percentage terms. Or to make it even simpler, just put a decimal before the last number. For example, if you have 750 as your hallmark, put the decimal before the zero and that gives you 75% gold content. If you have 583, for example, as your hallmark, put the decimal place before the three, which gives you 58.3% pure gold content in the jewelry. And I hope as you look at the table there, it is clear for you comparing the hallmarks versus what actually is the gold percent content in the jewelry. I think it should be fairly understandable and clear. But I am sure there are some of you out there saying right now, but how do I know how many carats my gold has? Where do I check on my gold jewelry for the hallmark? Don't worry, I've got you covered. When talking about rings, you can simply look on the inside of it to see the symbol that tells you how pure the gold is. And you can see that in these two examples here. And on chains and bracelets, it's just as easy. Just look around the clasp area and you will find the numbers there. And I admit these markings can be pretty small sometimes, so you may need a magnifying glass to help you read them. And I really want to stress the importance of checking these hallmarks when buying jewelry. Because different types of jewelry have different marks, as seen here in this table. And I really encourage you to take a screenshot of this for future use. Because, for example, if you see the marks 800, 925, or 958 in an oval, as shown on the left side of the table, that's not white gold a person might be trying to sell you. That's silver. So just be armed with this knowledge just to make sure that nobody can rip you off. And be especially careful looking out for marks like these. GP, GF, and GEP. These indicate that what you are holding is not solid gold, but simply gold plated. So gold on the outside and something else like bronze or copper or maybe silver on the inside. Okay, so now that you know how to find the markings, spot fake or plated gold, and determine the purity of your gold, the next thing to do is to weigh it. And to do that, I recommend to get a small jewelry scale like this one, which I bought on Amazon for $7, $7, they're not expensive. It's, it's worth it to have one of these things in your house. Especially if you are thinking about selling some gold jewelry, you want to know the weight of your jewelry exactly before getting into a deal to sell it. And if you are buying from a reputable jeweler, they should have a scale. But anyway, it's nice to have your own scale as a second tier of verification. Okay. And these things are very easy to use. I'll demonstrate it right now. I, I just press the on off button on it. I have to keep it on a flat, hard surface and it will show me triple zeros. I'll just, I have a gold ring here that I've brought for the purpose of this video. I will place it on the scale and it's showing me 7.7 .7 grams. So now we know how to check the purity of our gold and we know how much our gold weighs two very important pieces of information because the next step before we calculate the value is to calculate the exact weight of the gold content itself. Remember what I said earlier, the value of jewelry is based on the gold content only. Now this part is very easy because you are putting together the purity level, which we've already determined and you will multiply that percentage by the weight of the piece. So let's continue with this ring here. As I said, it weighs 
7.7 grams. And there is a hallmark on it indicating purity. It says 750. And going back to what we covered earlier, that means it is 75% pure gold. So when we calculate this, we take the purity, as I said, and 75% in number form is 0 0.75. Please remember that this number will always be less than one. So as I was saying, we, we take 0 0.75 and multiply that on a calculator by 7.7 .7 grams, which was the total weight of the ring, and we get 5.78. So what does that number mean? That means that this ring contains 5.78 grams of pure gold. Now, armed with that knowledge, we can multiply that by the price of gold per gram. Since the price of gold is usually exp expressed in troy ounces, we have to divide that number by 31.1 to get the price per gram because there are 31.1 grams in a troy ounce. At the moment of making this video, the spot price of gold is $1,764 per troy ounce meaning that per gram, once divided by 31.1, the price is $56.70. And now we're at the finish line because if we put all of that together, you know how to calculate how much pure gold is in your jewelry, and you know how to calculate the price of gold per gram, and if you multiply the price of gold per gram by the pure gold weight of your jewelry, you get the value of your gold jewelry. And for those of you selling gold jewelry, for whatever reason it is, that's about the best price you can expect to get for it. And I understand you may have paid more, maybe mom and dad paid a lot more for this gold jewelry than what you're seeing on the calculator or what the person at the local jewelry shop or pawn shop is offering you. And we'll cover reasonable jeweler markups for buyers in a second, but it boils down to simple mathematics. So let's do a quick example. In it, we have a 14 karat white gold chain. It weighs eight grams. Now remember, the gold content is going to be the same for any 14 karat gold, regardless of the color. So if it's yellow or rose gold, it doesn't matter. So we start with the 14 and divide it by 24. That gives us 0.583 which means we know the gold content of this chain is 58.3% of the total weight of the metal. And remember, for those of you who are using non-carat hallmarks, you will see the numbers 583 on the gold. And what we do next is we multiply the percentage of gold content by the total weight, which tells us this chain has 4.66 grams of pure gold in it. Now we do a quick calculation to figure out the price of gold per gram. Remember that's spot price divided by 31.1 because that's how many grams are in a troy ounce. And finally, we multiply the price per gram, $56.70, by the pure gold content of 4.66 grams, which tells us the chain is worth $264. Please screenshot this example for future reference too. And here is what that looks like for people outside of North America who are used to seeing the three digit hallmarks, just so you can get a visualization of what that looks like. You would see 583 on that chain and you would divide that by 1000 to get the percentage in a decimal and repeat the exact same steps. So as I said, please screenshot this. This may come in handy for you in the future. And if you're selling something, go through that exercise yourself before even going to the jeweler, before even going to the pawn shop, just to manage your own expectations because the number that the calculator ends up churning out and, and showing you may not be a number that is high enough for you to actually want to part with the piece of jewelry you're considering selling. So I really think that's important just to save yourself any embarrassment or 
any anger or, or grief with, with a jeweler or a pawn shop. But buying gold jewelry is a totally different game. And here you absolutely have to be careful because a lot of jewelry stores and dealers simply mark up their prices too high and I'm gonna put it this way, they're simply trying to rip off people who don't know about these calculations. And this is a fact. I mean, have you ever seen signs like this before? Signs advertising major sales on jewelry of up to 75 or 80% off. And when you go in the store, the bracelet that was originally $4,000 has miraculously become $1,500 but only if you walk out with the bracelet uh, out of the store right now? Well, that's because many jewelry stores have markups of up to or sometimes even exceeding five times the real value of what they're trying to sell you. And that's not mentioning stores like Tiffany's, Cartier, or Bulgari, where the markups are even higher, okay? Now, I understand they have costs such as the store, the jeweler who made the piece, the salesperson, the list of their costs certainly goes on and on and they have the right and need to make a margin on the product they're selling. But when you're buying gold jewelry, what I say is shop around. And once you've done the calculation, avoid at all costs paying more than double what the gold content is worth especially if you're looking at something as an investment piece that contains a lot of gold, so it, so it weighs a lot. And although it doesn't seem fair, most sellers will have double the value of the gold as their walk away or final price for the price of a piece of jewelry they're trying to sell you. So if we come back to the example of the white gold chain that we said is worth $264, if someone is trying to get more than $528 for it, you absolutely need to negotiate and if they won't budge, shop around, go somewhere else. That said, if you shop around enough, especially in jewelry dist uh, districts of large cities, you will likely be able to find better prices due to competition in those areas. If you're in a place like this, I would start by offering 50% above the value of the gold. And how you calculate that is, once you've done the calculation of what the gold is actually worth, you multiply the value of the gold by 1.5. Maybe you shop around a bit, and if that doesn't work, try to move to 60%, or as shown in the example here, up to 75% by multiplying the value of the gold by 1.75. It's not guaranteed to work, but it's a good thing to try for and shows you know the real value of gold. And if you don't like that, if you think that's too much to pay for gold, then, I mean, although I don't give advice, I guess my advice to you would be simply stick to buying gold bullion. Don't buy gold jewelry if you think that's too much to pay. Uh, to pay. Although I have to say, especially for men out there looking to buy some gold for their wives, I don't know if you're gonna get the best reaction from your significant other uh, when you hand them a, a gold maple leaf or a Kruger Rand on Christmas day instead of a, of, a, of a beautiful gold necklace. But hey, that's on all of you to figure out for yourselves. Now, just before I sign off, I have to answer our question of the week. And remember, you can submit your questions for me to answer here on the channel, in the comments section of this video, or any video that I've done. I see the comments as you, as you submit them. And this week, the question comes from Care, Pray, Live, Share. I hope I said that correctly. And he asks, is it better to pay a little more for a recognized a Sade bar, like a 10 ounce Royal Canadian Mint bar, serialized, or just a poured bar for weight. Is fractional silver worth it like American quarters or better off with larger? I assume larger denominations like full one ounce coins. Okay, so let's break this question down into two parts. So the first part, is it better to buy recognized assayed bars like the 10 ounce Royal Canadian Mint Bar serialized? And you can kind of see in the responses there, both Rusty Shackelford's and mine, where I said I agree with Rusty Shackelford and he's a subscriber. And what he said is, 
The Royal Canadian Mint Bars are probably the best silver to buy recognizable and desirable. And I agree with Rusty Shackelford. I mean, when it comes to me, and I don't buy specifically Royal Canadian Mint Bars, but I do buy recognizable bars and I do buy them serialized. And the reason I do that is because I believe simply that these products have more demand on the open market should I need to sell them. I know there's a channel out there on YouTube. I don't watch the channel, so I, I'm not you know, promoting this channel at all. It's called Backyard Boolean. I think the guy pours his own silver into weird things. For me, I would never stack that. I don't want that. I wish the guy all the best. Uh, I'm not trying to disparage him at all, but I'm not interested in having those kinds of things. I want either recognizable sovereign coins or silver bars. Now, coming to the second part of the question on quarters or dimes, personally, I don't go out of my way to stack these things or buy them. Do I have them? Yeah, I have them. And if I come across one, you know, maybe I'll, I'll pick it up, but it's more out of curiosity. I think if you're trying to build a serious silver stack, especially, or I should say at least from my point of view, it's best to focus on the sovereign coins. So here we're talking about Maple Leafs, Britannias, Eagles, Philharmonicers, those kinds of coins. But because the premiums on them are so high, kind of coming back to a topic I touched on in my last video, I think your best bet is to get recognizable bars. And I think it's very good and important to mention that serialized bars are the best things to buy because they're is simply more demand for them out there. People trust them more than, again, something you poured in your backyard. Sorry, backyard boolean. I don't know what you do, but I'm sure you're a great guy. <laughs> I just think those kinds of things are not that great. And that's it for this video. Please be sure to let me know what you thought of this video in the comments section. Don't forget to leave me a question if you'd like to see it answered here on the channel, possibly. And let us know if you like gold jewelry. I like it, obviously. I even like tacky things like this ugly gold ring with a lion's head on it that my wife absolutely hates and doesn't like to go out with me when I wear it. So anyways, like I said, let me know in the comments what you thought of the video. And until next time, take care, everybody.